Hi everybody, my name is Stephen Geller and today I'm giving a presentation on the chemical engineering impact on the energy sector. Um, so the overview, I'm going to talk about uh, the objectives of this presentation. Next I'm going to go into what is a chemical engineer exactly, what do they do, where do they work. Then I'm going to talk about what exactly is energy, how it impacts society, and then the interface of the chemical engineering and the energy sector, and we'll end with the conclusion. Uh, so first off, the objectives I want to talk about, again, as I said in the overview, discuss exactly what is a chemical engineer, what do they do, where do they work, um, and then how does this impact, or how do they impact the energy sector, uh, which is a huge, huge sector in society and basically powers everything that we have. Um, so, first off, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is the U.S. government agency, um, a chemical engineer applies the principles of chemistry, biology, physics, and math to solve problems that involve the production or use of chemicals, fuels, drugs, food, and many other products. Essentially, chemical engineers make everything, for lack of a better word, uh, in order to get a chemical engineering degree. Yeah, that's fine. In order to get a chemical engineering degree, you usually have to go to an ABED accredited university which, and complete a four to five year program. You have to be very, very well versed in math, physics, chemistry, biology, all the fun stuff that everybody loves. So you have to have great knowledge of organic chemistry, chemistry general chemistry, analytical chemistry, general physics, fluid dynamics, heat transfer, calculus, fun stuff. Uh, so next off, uh, what does a chemical engineer do now that you have your four to five year degree? Um, again, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they design processes and equipment for large scale, safe and sustainable manufacturing, plan and test methods of manufacturing products and treating byproducts and supervise production. Essentially, they make everything that we use in society. They design the products that go into this plastic to get, or this water bottle to give it the exact shape and structure that is needed that it can be sold into the marketplace. Not only with this plastic, which is probably uh, it's, yeah, polyeth or polyethylene terephthalene. Yeah, I don't remember right now. It was a long class long ago. Or the plastic used in this case. I mean, they're both plastics but have completely different uses. So... Um, they're also in the food industry. They're making all the food that we like to eat and live by. Oil, again, which is the really big for the energy sector, sector and drugs, and mass, pro mass production of drugs for a healthy society. So they really work in large-scale facilities, uh, chemical plants, oil, oil rigs, oil refineries, food processing units, and they're all over the country. Um, again, another statistic from the Bureau of Labor Statistics is that uh, there was approximately in 2012, 33,000 jobs, which is amazing how much of an impact a chemical engineer can have on society with only 33,000 jobs in the U.S., considering there are about 300 million people in the U.S., so, like, what is that, 1%? It's crazy. Um, another graphic here that says all the different industries that uh, a chemical engineer works in, so even though there aren't that many of them, chances are you've probably met one, or your life has 100% been impacted by a chemical engineer. So where do they work? Uh, another uh, BLS graph uh, shows basically of the whole U.S. where you can find a chemical engineer. The highest concentrations you can see are in Texas and Louisiana, um, in addition to California and the Northeast, but Texas and Louisiana have special importance because they're right on the Gulf, which has a lot of oil, so that's a great source for finding natural resources to use to make chemicals um, and oil. In addition, uh, it's right on the Mississippi River, so it's easy transport, quick and easy transportation to take it to the rest of the country. Uh, it's very hard to uh, fly a bunch of products or very expensive as well as uh, shipping it out through trucks or trailers. So two very important reasons why Texas and Louisiana are very, have a lot of chemical engineers. In fact, Houston is known as the uh, chemical engineering hub of the world. So what exactly is energy? Uh, I want to get this message across. It is the foundation of our society and it's the driving force for growth and change. It is the, it is the reason why we're able to have all the technology that we have nowadays from the computers that I have given this presentation off of to your cell phones, to the internet, and the amount of knowledge that we can spread between each other is only possible because we have the, the source of energy to power it and make it happen and sustained. And again, it's used in everything. All the cars, 
communication and traveling and any type of interconnection we can have through all different countries and peoples is made available through energy as the very base and foundation. And this is really fascinating to me how a chemical engineer provides the layout foundation for everything that we use. Uh, so I've been talking about energy, but where exactly does it come from? Well, it comes uh, in many of the finished products that we hear about every day. Oil, natural gas, coal, nuclear power. Oil is basically a bunch of hydrocarbons, which are a mix of methanes, octanes, hexanes. They're broken down, go through a bunch of chemical reactions and processing, eventually make a finished product that we can use to produce electricity or any other type of use as powering our cars and vehicles. Um, the problem with the, uh, these three top sources are that they're not renewable and they're, they're fossil fuels. So essentially, we're, we're consuming them at an extreme rate, much more than we can find and produce them. They take a very, very long time to produce. In addition, they produce a lot of greenhouse gases and are not good for the environment. So there's been a lot of research into making renewable energy sources, such as wind, solar, and geothermal, which we can use from nature. Uh, they're very clean and can be available almost all the time, but there's still a lot of technology and research that has to go into it. So here's just a graph showing the world energy consumption by fuel type. As you can see, uh, it has steadily risen since 1990, and right after 2010, it just skyrockets up. And even though the use in nuclear renewables is going to be is larger, the fact that we still need coal, liquids, and natural gas far surpasses the use that we'll have for these others. But it just goes to show that the demand, I mean, we need approximately by 2040, just in liquids alone, which is a lot of oil, almost 220 quadrillion BTUs, which is British, British thermal units, a measure of energy. And that's just an extraordinary amount. Um, and again, this is all made and produced by chemical engineers which is fascinating. So, a uh, chemical engineer, they work in the extraction, production, and consumption of natural resources to derive this energy. And a lot of them work for many companies that produce this energy, such as ExxonMobil, BP, Shell, FPNL, Duke Energy, um, many, many other companies that basically power the world. Some more statistics. As of 2015, average demand of oil is 93 million barrels of oil per day. It's a huge amount. Huge. I mean, about a third of the U.S. is using that. It's about using that a barrel every day. One person, but using a third. Speaking no, weird. Uh, and this trend, as you saw from the other graph, is only going to increase. To even show more impact that the energy sector has in the world, seven of the ten top largest companies by revenue are in the energy sector. They employ almost four million people worldwide and have about produce almost three trillion dollars collectively in revenue. This is showing that not only that energy helps sustain our world and grows it, but also it's affecting people's daily lives, giving them a reason to wake up, go to work, and be productive members of our societies. So that's another aspect that energy sector has. Um, not only is it chemical engineers running these companies and controlling it, but they're also employing a lot of operators to work and that they can go out and feed their, support their families. So then how does a chemical engineer fit, fit into all this? Well, as a chemical engineer, you're trained to think of processes. You have to know what you're starting with and what you're going to end up and then everything in between. And they have the knowledge, the chemical and physical knowledge to be able to transform a raw material, know how to take that go through a series of chemical reactions and physical transformations in order to make the usable desired product that you can also make a profit off of. Um, some of the raw materials, as we talked about, fossil fuels go into oil, as well as algae, which you can find anywhere, growing into a fuel which we can use and sustain ourselves. Also, their environmental stewards, um, common misconceptions that chemical engineers or oil companies are destroying the world and society and the environment, I'm not here to say they aren't that they are, but they aren't. But it is part of a chemical engineer's sole duty, solemn duty, to protect the environment at all costs and make sure that they're benefiting society. So they actually work very, very hard to try and limit exposures, uh, like greenhouse gases, as well as environmental leaks, um, and try and stay within the confines of the law. 
to the best of the ability that will still produce a profit. So they work very, very hard to make sure that the environment stays good and safe. Again, most, most of these companies that I talked about, they are hiring mostly chemical engineers. Uh, so chemical engineers are working for them, running, operating these facilities. In addition, a lot of them work up the corporate ladder. Um, many, some ma many famous CEOs that were also chemical engineers was Jack Welsh, who was the CEO of GE for a long time and made it into the powerhouse that it is today. In addition, this is Ben Van Buren, who's also the CEO of Shell right now, who, which is the fourth largest company in the world by revenue. Again, two chemical engineers who have enormous worldwide impact. Everybody's heard of Shell, everybody's heard of GE, everybody uses their products. So conclusion, chemical engineers display extraordinary knowledge in physics and chemistry. And using this knowledge, they can produce many, many diverse project, uh, products. With these products, uh, is one of the biggest one is energy, or at least lays the, has the most impact uh, in everyday use, even though you may never think of it or see it. Uh, you'll never really see oil as an end user product unless you're at the pump, but everything else that we have is used and using is being currently powered by some form of energy. And that form of energy is currently being created by a chemical engineer. So with that, I have a couple of acknowledgments. I want to thank the Department of Chemical Engineering at UF for teaching me everything that I know today, as well as Ms. Sane for uh, giving me the chance to make this presentation, and as well as my group one members. So with that, any questions? All right, thank you very much.